Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. The recent Master and Apprentice novels shed a lot of light on the golden age of the Jedi, focusing specifically on the adventures of Qui-Gon Jinn and his apprentice Obi-Wan Kenobi. For instance, did you know that Obi-Wan Kenobi used to adore flying? Yes, the same Jedi Master who said this. Blast, this is why I hate flying. The reason why he hates flying later on is because he was forced to fly a starfighter through the narrow corridors of a slave ship. Corridors so narrow that it makes the Death Star trench look like a six-lane freeway. We also learn a lot about the relationship between the Master and Padawan. Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi didn't always have the best relationship, and it took them quite a while to meld. And at one point, Qui-Gon Jinn almost stops being Obi-Wan Kenobi's master. This was because Qui-Gon Jinn was offered a seat on the High Jedi Council. There are four Jedi Councils in all, one for each of the four spires of the Jedi Temple. The High Council was in charge of the entire Order and guided it into its future. The head of this council was the Grand Master, and that seat had been filled by Master Yoda for quite some time. The appointment of Qui-Gon Jinn to the council, however, was a shock to a lot of people, including the Master himself. He'd always been seen as an unorthodox individual who didn't really follow the rules and the guidelines of the Jedi Order. As a matter of fact, Qui-Gon Jinn's relationship with the Order could be described as adversarial. But of course, being a group of Jedi, they still all had mutual respect for one another. The fact that the Jedi Council would invite him to join their ranks shows that they were open to hearing what he had to say. The Jedi Council had begun to recognize that the Order was stagnating. Even the most powerful Jedi like Yoda had experienced clouded connections to the Force. And things all across the galaxy seemed to be spiraling out of control. Little did they know, Darth Sidious and Darth Plagueis were creating chaos on the outer edges of the galaxy and also purposely tampering with the Force. There was also growing concern that the Order was losing its way and becoming more like a bureaucratic wing of the Republic rather than a spiritual order it was supposed to be. Of course, one of the problems with Qui-Gon Jinn joining the Council would be that he wouldn't be allowed to have an apprentice, or at least that's what it says in the novel. Yoda famously took a young Dooku underneath his wing when he still sat on the council. But of course, Yoda can probably do whatever he wants. Unfortunately, the news of Qui-Gon Jinn's ascension had reached Obi-Wan Kenobi before his master had time to tell him, which made things a bit awkward. Obi-Wan knew that if Qui-Gon Jinn took the position, he would no longer be his Padawan, and from what we can tell in Jedi history, no Jedi master has ever refused an appointment to the council. With the news of Qui-Gon Jinn's offer awkwardly hanging over their heads, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi journeyed to an island world known as Pajal for another mission. It was on this island that the relationship between these two Jedi would fundamentally change forever, and so would Qui-Gon Jinn's view of the Force and view on his own future. Pajal was located in the inner rim of the galaxy. Despite its location, it was still not well connected with the rest of the galaxy. The world was supposed to be ruled by a monarch alongside an assembly, but since the crown princess was far too young to rule, there had been a regent for quite some time. The Jedi Order had appointed the man, a troubled Jedi by the name of Ral Avaros. During a pretty routine anti-piracy raid, Ral Avaros' rash actions got his Padawan killed. While most Jedi would be disciplined for this kind of behavior, Rel had come to the Jedi Order at the ripe age of five and had always been given some leniency because of that. So instead of disciplining him, he was assigned the position of Regency so he could avoid any dangerous missions for quite some time. Rel was a good friend with Qui-Gon Jinn. They both shared a master when they were younger, Dooku. Rel had specifically asked the Jedi Council to send Qui-Gon Jinn to help him with a domestic terrorism issue. The Crown Princess was about to ascend to the throne, and during this ascension, she was going to sign a treaty with Zerka that would grant them more control over the system and also allow for the construction of a new hyperspace lane. This would create a lot of economic opportunities for the world of Pajal and its nearby systems, but a secretive group known as the Opposition had been carrying out increasingly violent protests against this deal. While on the world, Qui-Gon Jinn had a violent dream and vision. He saw an attack during the coronation of the Queen, which resulted in a lot of blood. He also noticed that Obi-Wan Kenobi was right in the middle of all the danger. 
Now, as we mentioned before, Qui-Gon Jinn actually developed an interest for Jedi prophecies after Ral Avaris had first shown him a holocron full of prophecies. And Ral had first been introduced to prophecies by Dooku. Prophecies were sort of a gray area when it came to the Jedi Order. The general rule was they could be looked at, but actually studying them in depth was considered quite dangerous and a quick path to the dark side. The idea is if you know the future or perceive that you know the future, it might create fear, especially if that future involves a lot of destruction or death. This fear will become a path of the darkness for them as they might desperately seek to change their future. This again was clearly a problem with Anakin Skywalker when he found out that his wife was going to die. Another problem with prophecies was that they were usually very vague and misleading. This would further complicate things and lead to people acting rashly. Anakin was unable to see that the reason Padme dies is partly because he abandons her. That or Palpatine explodes her heart. When Dooku was younger, he had also studied the holocrons with the prophecies in death and something in those prophecies had really scared him. But one day while Qui-Gon Jinn was studying the prophecies, Dooku walks in on his apprentice. Qui-Gon Jinn assumes that he would be reprimanded for doing this, but instead, Dooku looks intrigued. You see, every Jedi has one or two prophecies that they gravitate towards. Qui-Gon Jinn's prophecy of choice was the Chosen One prophecy. Dooku's prophecy, however, was one that said, he who learns to conquer death will through his greatest student live again. Dooku was obsessed with this one prophecy, and perhaps when he was younger, he sensed this obsession and knew how dangerous it could be. It was an addiction that Dooku had. He wanted complete control over his own future, and he really wanted to know what lay in store for him. After finding out about his royal blood when he was a youngling, he had always been obsessed about reaching his full potential. Dooku ultimately uses his own Padawan's curiosity as an excuse to fall back into his addiction. He tells Qui-Gon that if he's interested in the prophecies, he would need a master to help him learn about it. At first, things were fine. Dooku and Qui-Gon Jinn traded theories about the prophecies, but soon Dooku became obsessed once again, and that dark edge we saw so often when he became Tyrannus started showing up. This really scared Qui-Gon Jinn as he sensed the darkness in Dooku, and this also made him push himself away from the prophecies. He really began understanding that the best way to interpret them was to see them as just metaphors. So when he began having visions on Pajal's coronation ending in a bloody violent attack, he tried to brush it off. Although somewhere deep inside, he knew that the vision he had was probably going to happen. Qui-Gon Jinn was very well tuned into the Force. But what Qui-Gon Jinn didn't understand about prophecies was that Anakin and Count Dooku were quite different from him. First, Qui-Gon Jinn was a relatively balanced individual. He was also relatively pure of heart. He also was intellectually honest and always trying to see reason, which meant that he was ideologically flexible and always questioning things around him. Anakin was far too rash, and Dooku was dishonest with himself and never tried to fix his one major flaw, his obsession with power. Qui-Gon Jinn was constantly questioning himself and trying to figure out if what he was doing was right. In other words, he was the perfect person to interpret these prophecies. He had the right temperament and character. Ultimately, Qui-Gon Jinn doesn't do anything extreme during the coronation, and his vision does come true, but in an unexpected way. But that confirms with him that prophecies are real, and it changes his view on the Force and his own role within it. He realizes that no one in the Jedi Order is focusing on this more mystical and misunderstood part of the Force. As the Jedi became more entangled with the Republic and essentially became civil servants, their connection to the Force suffered. The laws of the Republic had replaced the sacred laws and rules of the Force. Qui-Gon Jinn realized as a member of the Council, he would never be free to pursue his studies in the Force again. The Jedi Council had become bureaucrats and the private police force of the Chancellor. They accepted the status quo and looked towards the imperfect Republic for guidance. A Republic that was strife with corruption, suffering, and even slavery. Sometimes the Jedi would even fight for these oppressive powers. There was a time when Qui-Gon Jinn wanted to change the Jedi Order from within. He would have leapt at the opportunity to lead the Jedi Order. But now he was committed to fully surrendering himself to the Force and letting it guide his actions no matter where it takes him. And so he refuses the seat on the Council. 
and better yet, his relationship with Obi-Wan Kenobi is repaired and he would continue to train this extremely important Jedi with a very important future. So that's why Qui-Gon Jinn refused a seat on the council. As you can tell, here was an individual with such a solid moral compass and such assurance in his own abilities that he was always able to instinctively go the right direction. And maybe that's something we can all learn from. Sometimes it's good to shut out all that noise around us and listen to our gut and instincts. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.